in Acts 9, and we left uh, Peter and Joppa, and we skip over now uh, to a related story. In Caesarea, there lived a Roman army officer named Cornelius, who was a captain of the Italian regiment. He was a devout, God-fearing man, as was everyone in his household. He gave generously to the poor and prayed regularly to God. So this this, uh, Cornelius guy was not Jewish. He was not Samaritan. He was a Gentile, so he was not a Jewish person. So up until this point, only Jews and Samaritans had heard about Jesus. It hadn't extended beyond that because the disciples, frankly, weren't even thinking that that was a possibility. Okay, so you can read this story, but basically the, an angel of the Lord says, hey, send to Peter, he's back in Joppa, send for this guy named Peter, and he's going to have a message for you. So, so he does this. He sends this messenger to Peter. Meanwhile, uh, in verse 9, it says, uh, As Cornelius' messengers were nearing the town, Peter went up on the flat roof to pray. So Peter's back in Joppa, and, uh, and now he's going up to pray. It was about noon, and he was hungry. But while a meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. And you can read this vision that he has, but I'll summarize it for you. The vision was of all of these unclean animals, as far as Jewish law was concerned, uh, they came on a sheet out of heaven, and, and a voice from heaven said, kill these things and eat them. And Peter said, no, I'm not supposed to do that. They're unclean. And the voice from heaven says, don't call something unclean that I have made clean. Now, this vision, it turns out, wasn't just about food. It was about how Jesus was broadening uh, the message of the gospel. And it wasn't about food. It was about people, that people aren't unclean. Okay, so that is no longer going to be the way that Jesus wants Jews to think about it, because that's even how the disciples still thought about it, that that the Gentiles were unclean. It was bad enough that the Samaritans were now in, you know, were heard the message of the gospel, but it was unthinkable that the Gentiles would hear the message of the gospel but, uh, but this is exactly what the vision um, meant. So Peter ends up going to Caesarea and he, he comes and he meets with Cornelius and his family. And he, and he says to them, you know, it is against our laws for a Jewish man to enter a Gentile home like this or to associate with you. But God has shown me in that vision that I should no longer think of anyone as impure or unclean. That vision helped him to realize that. So he came and so he preached the gospel message. They hear the good news, okay? Well, it says in verse 34, Peter says, I see very clearly that God shows no favoritism. In every nation, he accepts those who fear him and do what is right. This is the message of good news for the people of Israel, that there is peace with God through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. So there's Peter's uh, sermon. We saw his sermon in chapter 2 and in chapter 3 and in chapter 4. And so we see sort of a revised version of this, sort of a shortened version of the sermon right here, that there's good news for everyone. But notice now, I think I think this means something different to Peter because he says there that Jesus is Lord of all, not just Lord of Jews, not just Lord of Samaritans, but he is Lord of everyone. And so he starts sharing this gospel message. You can read this little mini sermon that he preaches here. But it says in verse 44, even as he was saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the message. And it says that the reason they knew that is because they started speaking in other languages and other tongues like the like had happened way back in, at the beginning of, the, of, of Acts. And now it's happening here for these Gentiles. And so they said this, Peter said, can anyone object to their being baptized now that they have received the Holy Spirit just as we did? And so they were baptized. Remember, baptism was a symbol that they had been accepted and that they were a part now of the people of God. And so we see in Acts chapter 10, this historic moment where, where Peter gets this vision that the gospel message isn't just for Jews or Samaritans, it's for everyone. And so again, further fulfillment of Acts 1.8 that this message was going to go out, that they were going to be witnesses to the whole world, not to just Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria. And so we see it happening starting in chapter chapter 10. And then in chapter 11, tomorrow, we're going to see how it just takes off because Paul's going to come back into the picture and he is going to be the, the messenger to the Gentiles. And so we'll pick that up tomorrow. But for now, go ahead and read Acts chapter 10.